Hi there, Chris Chuff the Cap, Motor Legends. A little bit different today. I'm not going to be reviewing a product per se, nor is this a product test. I'm not going to be comparing one brand against another. What today's about is looking at the array of helmets out on the market, the array of styles that are out on the market to help people understand what helmet is right for their kind of riding, for their kind of bike. So in a couple of minutes, I'm going to go over the other side of the shop. I'm going to waffle for a few minutes about some of the theory and so on. Then I'm going to review each of these helmet styles in turn. So the eight styles that I've got here, pretty much cover the market. There are a few specialist areas we don't cover, but these eight helmets cover most of it. So this helmet here, it's a retro off-road helmet. It looks off-road, but actually designed for the road. This is a variation on an open face helmet. This is a full visored open face helmet designed for people with cruiser bikes. This is a flip lid helmet. We love flip lid helmets here. This is a flip over helmet. So whereas the flip lid ends up here with a flip over helmet, the chin bar comes right across the back. We're gonna look at traditional classic open face helmets. That's an adventure helmet, distinguishable by the fact that it's got a peak. That's a classic full face helmet. And here we have a retro full face helmet. So that's the styles we're gonna be looking about. I was just you buckling because we're gonna be here for a few minutes. Let's go on over to the other side of the shop. Let me kick off by saying this video is aimed at the less experienced motorcyclist. Maybe someone who's not been biking long, someone who's perhaps only looking now at taking up motorcycling. The kind of rider who is confused by the enormous array of motorcycle helmets that there are out there in the shops. They don't know what kind of helmet to buy for their kind of riding or for their kind of motorbike. If, however, you're someone who's been riding for many years, for hundreds of years, and you know everything about motorcycling, you're just not gonna get a lot out of this video. And what's more, this is not gonna be a quick 10 minute jobby. I'm not famous for my 10 minute jobbies, but if time is short, then perhaps just go onto YouTube and look at one of those road rage videos of accidents in Russia. They're very entertaining. Now, recently, one of my many critics opined on YouTube that listening to me was like talking with his dad. Ask his dad the time and he would be given a lecture on how to build Big Ben. Well, I suppose I've got some sympathy with that guy, but in this particular video, we're going to cover a lot of ground, so it's not gonna be done quickly. We've already done a video about helmet fitting, what to look for when a helmet is being fitted, and if that's what you're interested in, then go and watch that video. I think it's pretty interesting. I'm gonna cover some of that same territory here, but this video is more about choosing a helmet. Our starting point is that a helmet is the most important item of protective wear that you're ever gonna buy, even more so perhaps than the motorbike itself. If I'm gonna be frank, if I'm gonna be crude about it, a motorcycle is a dangerous weapon. A motorcycle can kill you. A helmet can save your life more than any other item of protective equipment. That's why it's so important. And personally, we get a little bit peaked. We can't understand when customers come into the shop boasting about how they've just spent 1,500 quid or two grand on an exhaust or whatever amount of money it was on a paint job for their bike, and then they balk at spending 300 pounds on a helmet. It just doesn't make sense to us. I think however, that mindset is probably born out of a misconception that all helmets are the same as far as safety is concerned because they all meet that 2205 standard and in fact that's far from being the truth 2205 is a minimum standard even so a report that they did in italy a few years ago showed that when they bought helmets from a number of shops and tested them a number of those cheaper helmets no longer met 2205 but the fact is that the more prestigious brands by which i'm talking about the likes of arai and shui schubert and others they test to a much higher standard so all helmets are not the same when it comes to safety. Now, we don't agree with the adage that you always get what you pay for. And again, in the shop, we see lots of customers who have spent too much on the gear. They've, because they can afford it, perhaps they've gone and bought the best gear, but it's just not right for their kind of riding. But when it comes to helmets, by the same token, we think that this is an area where you really do not want to skimp. Buy the best that you can afford within reason, and then just suck it up. You need to have a good quality helmet. But don't overpay for gimmicks. And our view is that a good helmet, you will, you're gonna get about the best helmet you can find on the market for five or 600 pounds. Once you start paying 900 pounds, a grand and so on, you're not getting any more, you're just spending more. 
I do want to talk a little bit about helmet fit. I mentioned that we've done a video on that subject already, but there are some points that I want to cover because there's some stuff that you do need to know when buying a motorcycle helmet. The fit of a helmet is important for a number of reasons. A well-fitting helmet is safer because if, for example, you go to do a lifesaver of your shoulder, if the helmet is loose and moving around, the helmet will move independently. If you're riding at speed, a loose helmet will wobble, it can create a double vision, it's not safe. A well-fitting helmet will not cause you a headache, and a headache on a motorbike is a pain in the posterior as well as in the head. You really cannot concentrate on your riding, you cannot concentrate on what's going on around you if you've got a blinding headache. A well-fitting helmet will be quieter. If, for example, you've got a helmet that's too loose, the air will come in under the chin, the chin. it will come past the cheeks to the ears, and that will become noise. A well-fitting helmet will last longer. Again, if the helmet is too loose, then the cheek pads are gonna give over time, as they always do. We need to start off with a fairly tight fit that loosens up. If you start with a helmet that's loose, it's gonna get looser, it's gonna become noisier. It just won't last as long. The fitting of helmets is not, as many people think it is, purely about the circumference of your head. A motorcycle helmet is a rigid structure. It's not like a cap. So, for example, in a cap, if I'm a 58, I'm a 58 in every cap because the cap will conform to the shape of my head. But we do all have different shaped heads and all helmets, by the same token, are differently shaped. So a 58 head will not work in all 58 helmets. And I think that's a common mistake. People measure themselves because they've read on websites that that's what they're meant to do. They work out that there are 59 or 60, they go on the internet and they order a helmet in 59 or 60, and it just does not work like that. Now, the reason it doesn't is because, as I've said, we all have different shaped heads. So for example, if you've got a round head, that's, these two heads are the same, they're both the same measure be at 58, 59 or 60. But if you've got a round head, you will not work in a shoey. So if you're a round headed 58 and you try to get into a 58 shoey, it won't work because what will happen because of the long oval shape, the helmet will be too tight at the sides. If you're a 58, an oval shaped head, and you try to fit into a shoe booth, which is a rounder shape, it won't work because it's gonna be too tight front to back. Now. The helmets we like, particularly at Moto Legends, are those helmets, and I'm thinking of brands like Ari and Arai and Shui, but there are other brands. We like brands where you can change the liners to customize the fit. So here, in almost every sh a Shui, it will have a standard, what we call a, a nine size liner. But if we want to tighten it up a little bit, because the helmet's a little bit loose, we can put in a 13, or if we need to loosen it up because it's too tight, we can put in a five. By the same token, we can do that with the cheek pads. We take these out. These, in almost every helmet, will be 35 mil. We can take those out and we can change that for a thicker or a thinner cheek pad. So that, to our mind, is the perfect way to fit a helmet. We look at a customer we find more or less the right size and then we can custom fit it. When you go to a shop, I think you have the right to expect that the assistant is going to spend some time with you and show a level of care. If when you go in the shop, if all they say is the helmets are over there, mate, I think you should just turn around and walk out. If by the same measure, when you're talking to them, you've got a hel helmet on and you go, oh, it's a wee bit tight here or here. If they just say, oh, it's gonna bed in, it'll be fine. Again, that's rubbish, you need to just turn around and walk out. Now, comfort is crucial in a helmet for the reasons I mentioned. Only when the helmet fits properly and is comfortable can you ride safely with all the concentration that you need given to the road. But there's comfort and there's comfort, as it were. By comfort, we mean a helmet that is touching all over, kind of snug, maybe less than snug, and certainly not tight. But you can have a helmet that is too comfortable because if you have a helmet that is just too big, that's also going to be comfortable. So there's a test that we do here. We put the helmet on. When we press it from the back, we like to release a bit of space around the front of the forehead. And that's because there's foam at the back of the helmet. When we press it, I'm looking to compress into that and create this little bit of space around the forehead. By the same token, we want it tight on the cheeks. We want a bit of a chipmunk cheek feeling. That way, as I mentioned, it's gonna last longer, it's gonna be quieter and so on. 
All I would say is when you're buying a helmet, take the process seriously. It is not about colors. Do not go into a helmet saying, into a helmet shop saying, what do you have in green, please? If you concentrate too much on the fripperies, the features and so on, you may rule out finding the helmet that is right for you. If you're going to say, I want a flip lid, but it's got to have a double D ring, you will narrow the choice down so much that you may never find the helmet that is right for you. My final point would be don't be too swayed as some bikers are, particularly those who are new to biking. Don't be swayed too much by the Sharp ratings. Now, Sharp was a great system. It came in when we joined the EU, and the idea was that the guys who had been doing the BSI tests, they had a laboratory, they had some test equipment, and the thinking was that they would create a test that enables them to tell us what helmets are better than, than others. So they had a star rating, one star, two star, three star, four star, and five star. But the report that made the recommendations for this test they ignored many of the considerations and they cheaped out a little bit. They didn't use the head forms that they were meant to. And as a result, I think the tests lack a lot of credibility. When they first brought out their first tranche of tests, they gave a five-star rating to a 60-pound thermoplastic laser helmet. And I think they gave a three-star or a two-star to an Arai helmet. And I'm afraid from that point, nobody in the industry has really taken sharp all that seriously. Open face helmets are fantastic and if you're of a certain age, that certain age being my age, you'll be able to remember a time when that's what everyone wore. Nothing quite matches the wind in your hair feeling that you get from an open face. It just cannot be replicated in a full face helmet. And on a Sunday morning, if I'm out for a potter in the Surrey Hills, there's nothing I like more than riding in my open face helmet. Helmets are tested to the same standard. Some people think that they are in some ways inferior, but they're not. They're still tested to 2205. But what you cannot ignore is that there is no chin protection on an open face helmet. Now, when you have an accident, you basically lose control. You do not know where you're going to land. You do not know what is going to happen. And if your chin hits something hard, part of a car, the pavement, the road, whatever it is, I can promise you your chin is going to come off worse. So, Choose an open face helmet if it's really important that you look like Steve McQueen. But you need to know the limitations, other than the safety element, you need to know the limitations of an open face helmet. They are the noisiest of helmets, for obvious reasons you don't have a screen and you don't have a chin bar. They're pretty useless in the rain. Here at Motor Legends, we don't really like to sell open face helmets to beginners. Now, on one level, it's not for us to tell people what they can wear on their bike. But right now, what we're finding is a lot of people are coming to motorcycling because it's very stylish right now. They're coming into it for fashion reasons. And what we have to point out, what those people need to understand is that open face helmets, as lovely as they are, stylish as they are, they are more dangerous, and that is a fact. When you go into a shop and first try on an open face helmet, you'll look in the mirror and you'll think that your head is absolutely enormous. I've got to say, it doesn't look enormous. You're just going to have to get over, over it. I've been to bike meetings for years all over the country and I have never seen anyone point at another rider and go, have you seen the size of that helmet on that guy's head? It's merely that we are not used to seeing our faces inside a bowling ball, as it were. Now, if you are a hipster or some kind of Harley rider, you may be on the lookout for a low profile helmet. And that comes out of the US where let's face it, in many states you don't have to wear a helmet at all. But over there, the big thing is to have a very low profile helmet by which we mean it fits very closely to the head. I have to say that that is pure vanity. A low profile helmet, often those low profile helmets, by the way, are not CE approved. So some of them come out of America and they don't meet the safety standard at all. But even if it does meet the ECE 2205 standard, a low profile helmet is going to be less comfortable because it'll have no padding and it is going to be less protective. In terms of the features that you might look for on an open face, there aren't many. Some will have poppers here that will enable you to put a peak on. Sometimes you'll have poppers up the side as well so you can put a bubble visor on perhaps. There are lots of different combinations of colorways and interior colors, but that's kind of it. You might also get on some a goggle strap because a common way of wearing or a common form of protecting your eyes with an open face is a set of goggles. But really, it's the simplest of all helmets. Here at Motor Legends, we don't sell what I suppose you would call pucker off-road helmets. So if you're the kind of rider who spends 
a lot of his time off-road riding enduros and so on. We are not specialists in that field. We do not sell the kind of helmet that would be appropriate for that kind of riding. What we do sell by contrast, and we sell a lot of them, are adventure helmets. Now, these helmets take their inspiration from off-road helmets. They look like off-road helmets, but they're somewhat softened because they're actually about riding on the road. The biggest difference between an adventure helmet and a proper off-road helmet, I suppose, is going to be the provision of a visor. And what that's going to do is going to give you protection from the elements, from the rain, from stones, from wasps, from whatever. Most adventure helmets, as I mentioned, are fashioned like off-road helmets. So they're very versatile. You've got this particularly large aperture, which means that if you are riding somewhere hot, and that's the idea of an adventure bike and an adventure helmet, it gives you the ability to travel off wherever you want. So you might find yourself crossing a desert somewhere. You can open this up and let lots of air in. The visor is also on all of these helmets, as it is on most helmets, but the visor is removable so you can wear goggles with it. So this is an aperture that's going to be big enough to take any goggle. You've got, on most adventure helmets, you've got this extended nose piece. Again, this comes from off-road helmets. Now, that does two things. If you're working hard off-road or if you're somewhere hot, you'll be breathing heavily. If you've got a normal road helmet, often the chin bar is too close to the face, you're going to get very hot, you're going to get steamed up. So this extended nose bar enables you to get cool air in, enables your air to escape and so on. I do wonder whether by origin these extended nose pieces were about the fact that if you're riding off-road there is a slightly greater danger of you coming off the bike and face planting somewhere and certainly with a longer chin piece there's going to be less chance of you damaging your chin. Perhaps the defining feature of an adventure helmet however is the peak and again the idea is that if you're riding somewhere you're riding across the savannah as the sun sets all you have to do is dip your head a little bit and you can block out the sun and I think that's very useful. The fact is that most adventure helmets, this particular one doesn't, but most adventure helmets will have a drop down sun visor and that does the same kind of job. Here at Most Lens we've got lots of customers who actually prefer the peak to the drop down sun visor and these are the kind of guys who they're commuting east in the morning into the sun, west at night, they just say it's easier to dip your head to cut the sun out rather than be fiddling all the time with the drop down sun visor. Well, I understand that, but in truth, I have a feeling that the visor is more about looking the part. You've bought yourself an adventure bike, you've got yourself an adventure suit, adventure boots, you've got some metal panniers on the side to complete the look. What do you need? You need an adventure helmet. Full face helmet is almost ubiquitous. It is by far the most common and prevalent style of motorcycle helmet on the market. And for most bikers, it is going to be the go-to option. It is the safe and sensible choice. You're not going to look out of place on any bike if you're wearing a full face helmet. Problem is that in this review, given the time constraints we've got, we just cannot do justice to the sheer breadth of range, the panoply of styles that are available in the full face helmet market, as it were. These helmets come in all kinds of different forms. There are, for example, super light helmets that are made of carbon fiber. There are very cheap helmets made from polycarbonates. There are more expensive helmets. There are helmets that are more comfortable than others. Some are very quiet, some are a little bit noisy. Some come with anti-fog visors. Some come, down, some come with drop-down sun visors. Some with pin locks. Some with pre-wired comms like this one, the GTA 2, and so on. Nevertheless, for most, the full face helmet is going to be the obvious choice. It's going to give you the greatest level of protection because you've got the fixed chin bar, you've got a fixed visor which is going to protect you from the elements, so the wind, the rain, the cold, the stones and so on. I'm going to come on and talk about in a minute the benefits of flip lid helmets and we love flip lid helmets and we do think they have benefits but for many riders, most riders I would suggest, a full face helmet is going to be probably the right choice. Clearly if you're into racing, if you like the racing aesthetic, you'll be into a full face helmet because that's where you get those kind of aggressive racy looks. But I would suggest that on any sports bike, you're probably want to go, going to want to go for a full face because in some ways, any other kind of helmet on a sports bike just looks a little bit wrong. But none of this makes finding the right full face any easier because the choice out there is simply huge and it's difficult to know where to start. For us, I think it still comes down to fit. Not that that makes it easier because there's a huge range of helmets in different fits, but you just need to go to someone who knows what they're talking about because there will be a helmet, come what may, that fits your head. And I suppose in this respect, there's nothing different there about full face helmets to any other helmet. You need to get the fit right. 
In motorcycling, as in life, there are no truths. There are just shades of opinion. So our truths about flip lids are born out of our liking for flip lids. Frankly, we do not see the downsides. Nevertheless, we're going to try and give a more or less balanced point of view. I started riding in the 80s. All of my early bikes were sports bikes. And back then, we used to rag the wearers of flip lid helmets mercilessly. Back then, all the guys who wore flip lids seemed to ride BMWs. And what you have to bear in mind is that BMWs back then were very different to BMWs now. They weren't particularly sporty. The guys who rode BMWs were older or older in spirit. We used to tease them about the fact that they must have panniers in order to carry their pipes and slippers. My, did we think we were funny. But the problem is many of the guys who were brought up on biking in that era still carry the same prejudices. And many of them think that the only benefit of a flip lid helmet is that you can just flip it up to when you want to buy petrol or when you want to ask someone for directions. Many people realize, of course, that when you're in town, you can put the flip lid up just to get a little bit more air in. Some people, heaven forbid, think that the main benefit of a flip lid is so that they can smoke whilst riding. But actually, the real benefit of a flip lid helmet is that they are quieter, or rather, they can be quieter. Not all flip lids are quieter than full faces, far from it. But the way we put on a flip lid means that they have the capacity to be made quieter. If you buy a cheap flip lid, all you do is buy a cheap flip lid. But all the quietest helmets on the market happen to be flip lids. So talking about helmets like this, the Schubert C3 or the Schubert C4 Basic. Flip lid helmets are quieter because they have the capacity to have a tighter neck roll. And that's because of the way that we wear or put on a flip lid. The flip lid has flexible sides, so to put it on, we pull it apart, pull it down, and then the sides bounce back into the neck. Therefore, the aperture, if we were to look at the aperture, that doesn't have to be big enough to put your head in. That enables us to have this tighter neck roll. And I think I can best demonstrate that by highlighting this helmet, which is the Neartec 2 from Shui. This helmet is the GTR 2. It's pretty much the identical helmet, but it's a full face helmet. So if I were to put my, let me just do this strap up a second. If I were to put my fist in there as a demonstration of my neck to uh, sample the neck, you can see there's not a huge amount of space around it for air to come in. Air coming into a helmet, when it reaches the ears, that is noise. If I were to do the same with the GTR 2, I put my fist in, there's loads of room around it. So it's because of the neck roll that a flip lid can be quieter than a full face helmet. So in addition to the other benefits that we've spoken about, being able to smoke, uh, being able to ask directions, petrol station, so on, flip lids are just quieter. It's why a flip lid is the most common choice for the long distance commuter. So all of the guys who commute from us or south of us on the A3 into London, into the West End of the city, Almost to a man, they wear flip lids. All helmets damage our ears. Motorcycling is horribly noisy. We don't realize it at times, but whenever we ride over a certain speed, 30, 40 miles an hour, we were causing damage to our ears. All it can be said is that a flip lid is going to cause less damage to your ears. You should still wear earplugs, but whether you wear them or not, a flip lid helmet is going to be quieter. Now, some flip lids are what are called P and J rated. And a P and J rating means that you can be worn in the closed position or in the open position. In truth, I don't think it makes a big difference whether they are homologated to be worn open. I've seen lots of policemen over the years wearing shoebirths that were not P and J rated, riding around town with them open. So it's a difference without a distinction, as it were. This helmet in particular, however, the Neotech 2 does have a, a lock position that means that you can ride with it open but you probably wouldn't because at anything over 30 miles an hour, this is a barn door. So you just wouldn't, even though you could, you wouldn't want to be riding at any more than kind of walking speed in town, something like that with it open. If I'm riding through France on the end roads and it's really hot, what I often do as I come into the village, I'm feeling hot, I pull it open, I go through the village at 30 kilometers an hour, whatever the speed limit is, as I come out, I pull it down again. So I find that very useful. Some people think that flip lid helmets are less protective and their reasoning is this is a separate piece. From an engineering standpoint, therefore it stands to reason that they are less strong. I'm not an engineer, but I'm not gonna argue with that as a theoretical standpoint. 
all I know is I have never come across or I've never heard of a situation where the chin pad has collapsed. It also has to be said that the end of the chin is not technically a high impact zone in accident. In fact, often what happens is the chin ends up being pushed into the chest. Most impacts are at some point on the skull. But there is one safety benefit that to counter that, whatever your views on that, there is one undeniable safety benefit to a flip lid. And that is if you have an accident and are lying on the side of the road, if the first responders want to take your helmet off, that's a very delicate exercise that not many people want to undertake. It requires two people, two skilled and knowledgeable people to do that. And you're not guaranteed that those people are gonna be around. If you've got a flip lid, this red button is a signal to the emergency services. Press that, flips up, someone can immediately check your airways. So I can see some benefits from a safety perspective, from a protection perspective in a flip lid helmet. The police, blood runners, and all kinds of professional riders prefer to ride in flip lids, and there's got to be a reason for that. I also think that these days, when you close a flip lid, if I put these two helmets together, you can't really tell that one's a flip lid. So there's no aesthetic difference between the, the two helmets. So given all the advantages that we've outlined, we simply don't understand why you wouldn't go for a flip lid. Okay, if you had a sports bike, if you wanted something particularly racy, or if you wanted something particularly retro, there's no such thing as a retro flip, flip lid. If you wanted an adventure helmet with a peak on, you wouldn't go for a retro necessarily. But on most bikes where you could ride a normal full face helmet, a flip lid is just going to work better. So helmets like this are known as flip over helmets, or rather we here at Mojo Legends know them as flip over helmets. They are a variation on the flip lid theme that we've already discussed. So whereas on a flip lid, when you open the chin bar, it stands up like that. On a flip over helmet, the chin bar comes all the way over to the back. And there are a few helmets that do that. And what this does, it creates a truly practical open face helmet because if you try to do that on a flip lid, on a traditional flip lid, you've got the chin piece up there. It's kind of a barn door. It's not particularly aerodynamic and it just doesn't work. But when you pull this over, you have got a proper full face. So surely you might ask or you might suggest this is the perfect helmet. This solves everybody's problems. You've got a full face helmet when you want it and an open face helmet when you want an open face helmet. Well, the answer is yes and no. Now, the main helmets in this category, there are two really, there might be a few others, but the main two protagonists are Shark, which is this company with their range of Evo helmets. Another company is Roof, another French brand like Shark. Their helmets are very cool, but probably even less practical than the Evo range. But the reality is that these helmets are probably better in the open face configuration than they are in the full face configuration. This particular helmet, we think is a great open fa face helmet because you've got, the way it's designed, you've got this extra chin protection that comes all the way around the front of the chin. So if you are gonna have an accident and come off, this gives you more protection than just about any other open face helmet on the market. But these helmets are first and foremost about urban commuting. So in cities like Paris or Milan, they are hugely popular. So you've got the guys coming to work, they might be on the ring road or the periphery whilst they reach their exit and then they head off into town, the traffic slows and you're getting hotter. So on the periphery, they've got the helmet worn as a full face helmet. When they come into traffic, they lift this up, they've got an open face helmet. And if you use a helmet like this in that way, I think these helmets work incredibly well. But by contrast, if you spend more of your time at speed and out of town, you have to acknowledge that these helmets are pretty noisy. So fun and interesting as they are, they do not offer the ultimate solution that they might purport to do. They are not the perfect all-purpose helmet. They're going to suit some people, absolutely. So here in the UK, if you lived in London or worked in London and lived somewhere within the M25, you might have some faster bits until you hit the traffic again, and then the final slog into the office or wherever is at 10 miles an hour, then a helmet like this might be perfect. But if you then wanna to go touring, you wanna to go out at weekends and build up your speeds a little bit, this helmet is going to be a noisy helmet and you might find that it's not the perfect helmet for you. It's not quite what you might think it's going to be. The helmet type that I wanna talk about now we know them as off-road retro helmets, and it's a genre that's fairly new to the motorcycle market. It was Bell who first came onto 
the scene with a helmet like this. They basically reprise their Moto3 off-road helmet from the 70s and 80s. And indeed, the helmet that they bought out was still called the Moto3. Then they were followed by Shui, who bought out this helmet, the X0. And that style, or this style, has been adopted by a number of the other kind of fashion brands. All of them are based on the designs of those helmets, as with Bell, those helmets, those off-road helmets from the 70s and 80s. But there's one important thing you need to understand. These are road helmets. They are not off-road helmets. If you ride seriously off-road, a helmet like this is probably not for you because they're not light enough to be a modern off-road helmet. They're not vented enough and so on. I did, actually, when I rode in the Sahara, not last year, the year before, I did ride one of these. I thought it was great, but I wasn't working particularly hard. These helmets are designed, this type of helmet is designed for the rider of a modern scrambler, so something like a BMW R9T scrambler or a Triumph scrambler and so on. Now, here at Motor Legends, we don't normally submit to the demands of fashion, but we really like these helmets, probably for a reason that was not initially envisaged when the designers started creating these. We see these helmets as open face helmets for people who want to keep their chins mentioned already that the danger or the problem with an open face helmet is if you have an accident, your chin's exposed. But with a helmet like this, you've got pretty much the same amount of airflow. You've got this great big aperture here, so you're gonna get a lot of that wind in your hair feeling. But if it does go Peter Tong and you land on something, then your chin is fully protected. And that's something that we really like. Potentially it's gonna give you the best of both worlds. In terms of protection from the elements on this particular version, you don't get it on all of these helmets, but on the Shui version, you get a drop down visor. On many of them, you'll just wear goggles here. It's another way of protecting your eyes, obviously. And almost any on-road or off-road goggle is going to fit within this aperture. Have to accept that you don't have great protection from the elements. So a helmet like this is not going to be particularly warm. And in the rain, it's going to be pretty useless. They do, though, look the business. These helmets are what is known as full face retro helmets. And that's a category of helmet that is pretty close to our hearts here at Motor Legends because lots of our customers ride classic bikes, custom bikes, retro bikes, cruisers, and so on. The category was kicked off, as it were, by Bell back in 2014 with their Bell Bullet. And that helmet was a revelation. And the reason it was was because it had a beautiful round shell. And that's what everyone had been looking for because when you're riding one of these retro bikes, you want a helmet that looked as though it was, would have been right in period. And what everyone wanted was a nice, smooth, round shell. That's exactly what the Bell Bullet had. Prior to the Bell Bullet, you had to have some kind of sporty helmet, maybe the sharp, pointy nose or an aerofoil or different shapes on the helmet. They just didn't look right on those kind of bikes. So the Bell Bullet, when it came out, was somewhat of a revelation. It was a super cool helmet, and it sold like Billy O. Immediately after that, every other manufacturer, all the small manufacturers and some of the major manufacturers, copied that style of helmet. And many of those looked fantastically period. They were really cool lids. But most, it has to be said, including the original Bell, were horribly compromised from a rideability standpoint. Many of them were and still are just rubbish. Invariably, those helmets were noisy. They didn't have basics such as a chin curtain to stop the air coming up underneath and reaching the eyes. No one gave any consideration to a seal between the visor and the shell of the helmet, that did two things, allowed more air to come in, more air is more noise, allowed the rain to come in, and so on. Venting was either all or nothing. Some would have holes or grills that were permanently open, some had nothing at all. Not one of these helmets had a changeable part on the inside, so we couldn't change the cheek pad fitting or the headliner. None of them had pin locks. So when it rained or was cold, they just fogged up. You had no choice but to just lift the visor up. Those helmets were historically all about style. They were not great for riding. And the problem was that the designers who put these helmets together, they were only concerned about the external aesthetics. The way you create a helmet is that you start from the inside out. You start with the head fit, you get a great fit on the helmet, and then you design the outsides. But what happened with those helmets, everyone was concerned with how it looked on the outside, how it fitted seemed to be a matter of secondary consideration. The category was spared its blushes a couple of years ago by both Arai and Shui. Shui with its Glamster, Arai with its Rapide Neo. Now, these brands, Arai and Shui, make most people would agree the best helmets on the market. So now you can get a retro helmet that has all of the facilities of the very latest high-tech modern helmet. You get proper venting. 
you've got proper seals, proper seals around the visor, you've got chin curtains. Both of these helmets, for example, come with the top of the range Pinlock 120s. They've both got changeable cheek pads, headliners and so on. So these are, in every way, modern technical helmets. They just have a bit of extra cool factor. You know, I'm not even sure that I know what the generic term or descriptor is for these helmets. I think some people know them as a cruiser helmet. We often just term them open faces with full length visors. And that's what this is. It's an open face helmet. It's a variation on the open face helmet. The difference is it's got a full length drop down or pull down visor. You should be aware that a helmet like this offers you no extra protection in an accident situation. You're not really gonna get any protection if you hit the ground and hit the front of that visor. Nevertheless, these helmets are popular with a certain kind of rider, and I think we often see them on people who are riding big cruiser bikes where you've got a screen. Now, what happens is that large screen protects you from the wind. You don't get a lot of airflow, and in a full-face helmet, on those bikes, you can get very hot. So a helmet like this will often help you stay cool, particularly if you do a lot of touring and you're touring south of France or you're touring across the States or whatever. You're gonna get more protection with this visor from the elements than you do from an open face helmet. So your eyes won't water if you're riding at 70 miles an hour in a helmet like this. They are not quiet helmets, but they're going to be quieter than a normal open face helmet. They're not super cool like open face cafe racer helmets, but they are perhaps more practical. I've got one of these helmets. I ride a lot in one of these in the summer, but then again, I'm not super cool. So listen, I hope that that video has been of some interest that if you were someone who was confused by the sheer array of helmets out on the market, the different styles that we might have provided a degree of clarity. If you want to look at more helmets, visit the website motolegends.com. When you buy from us, we try to make the process simple, straightforward and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item you buy from us. Returns are totally free and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. And we have the best price promise in the business. John Lewis is rightly famed for their never knownly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. There are a few terms and conditions, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are intending to price beaters, visit the website and you can check out what those terms and conditions are. In the future, if you'd like to see bulletins from us about new product launches, then visit the website. Top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there, within seconds you'll be in business. If, however, you prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say in this form, we'd be delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this is 2021. Last year, 2020, we gave away to a YouTube subscriber a 125cc Mutt motorcycle. We'd customized it a little bit to look like a Steve McQueen desert sled. This year, 2021, we are giving away a Fantic Caballero Scrambler. So we've gone up market a little, but we're not giving it away to a YouTube subscriber, but rather to somebody who follows us on Facebook. So if you want to stand a chance of winning this fabulous little machine, go over to Facebook and obviously follow us. I'd like to finish with a little play for our shop here at Moto Legends. We're based about a mile from the center of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And as I've suggested, it's a little shop. It's got a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds worth of stock arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Italy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And if you're lucky, you might even get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.